warp drive possible? Today, we are going to discuss if warp drive is actually possible. Doesn't warp technology contradict Einstein's theory of general relativity? What is negative energy? If you are interested in these questions, we will tell you all you need to know. Stay till the end to find out the recent developments that have made warp technology a possibility. Helm, warp one, engage. What is a warp drive? In order to travel between stars or explore the far reaches of the galaxy, we need to travel faster than the speed of light. At present, faster than light travel is possible only in science fiction. In Star Wars, we have the idea of hyperspace. And in Star Trek, we have the warp drive technology. So a warp drive is a device that distorts the shape of the space-time continuum and enables travel at speeds greater than the speed of light. It isn't an instantaneous form of travel, like a jump drive or a transporter beam. A lot of us first came across the idea of traveling through space faster than the speed of light in the Star Trek universe. Starships in this franchise routinely use warp technology to achieve such speeds. Initially, the idea of a warp drive and traveling faster than the speed of light was just a part of science fiction that we fans could only dream about. Why was warp travel just a dream? According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, we live in a four-dimensional world. The three dimensions that we observe, up, down, left, right, and front, back, are inseparable from time, which is the fourth dimension. When we move across space-time, we can accelerate only up to the speed of light. Therefore, traveling faster than the speed of light was impossible. How did the impossible become improbable? In 1994, a theoretical physicist, Miguel Alcubierre, proposed a theoretical method of traveling faster than light. His proposal was unique since it conformed to Einstein's theory of general relativity while allowing FTL travel. Alcubierre, who is an avid Star Trek fan, theorized that it was possible to transport a volume of flat space inside a bubble of curved space. So, the Alcubierre model of a warp drive would contract and twist space-time in front of it and create a bubble. This bubble of curved space was called the hyper-relativistic local dynamic space. Let's simplify things. Imagine you are standing at point A and you want to travel to point B, which is 10 meters away. If you are traveling at the speed of one meter per second, you will reach point B in 10 seconds. If there was some way to compress the distance between point A and point B to one meter, you could cover the distance in just one second without increasing your speed. Similarly, the Alcubierre drive pulls or warps the fabric of space-time around the spaceship, and the ship is situated in a new place relative to space-time. So space-time would expand on one side of the ship and contract on the other side. Alcubierre described this process as being similar to standing on a walking escalator. He stated during a lecture, you can imagine that the floor behind you is being created out of nothing, and in front of you it is being destroyed, so you move along. The downside of this theory was that such a warp drive required an immense amount of energy probably more energy than what is available in the universe. In addition, Alcubierre stated that you would need some form of negative energy radiating a kind of anti-gravity to make this drive a reality. When we look at Einstein's theories, energy must be a positive number. According to Einstein's formula E equals mc squared, the concept of negative energy could not exist. However, developments in quantum theory have shown us that energy could have a negative value. Energy has a negative value on some rare occasions. One of the examples of negative energy is the Kashmir effect. However, the quantities of energy involved are minuscule. Alcubierre himself admitted that the negative energy issue was a significant shortcoming in his theory. He abandoned research in this field and turned his attention to known phenomena such as black holes. What has changed over the past few years? Recent developments have taken the field of faster-than-light travel forward. During the pandemic, a physicist, Eric Lentz, went through Einstein's theory of general relativity. After carefully looking at Einstein's equations, Lentz found a different way to look at general relativity. 
His research allows for the creation of a warp bubble using only positive energy. Since there is no requirement for negative energy, Lentz has made research in this field viable again. Alcuberry even backed his theory. Another group of researchers, Alexei Bobrick and Gianna Martiri from the independent research group Applied Physics, also found a way to enable warp travel without resorting to using negative energy. They formulated new classes of warp drive solutions that would require a powerful gravitational field. The act of bending space-time would be done by gravity, and the passage of time inside and outside the warp drive would be significantly different. Though these developments are mathematical models, we can say that warp travel is theoretically possible now. And that's a wrap, folks. What is your favorite method of faster-than-light interstellar travel? How long do you think developing an actual warp drive will take? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.